So we're in section 6.3. I'm about to start example 6, but we're going to um, find the formula for working backwards. So just like in 6.2, we worked backwards where we started with percents. We'll do the same thing. So we're going to solve for x in this z-score formula. So I'm going to multiply by sigma to solve for x. So we get z times sigma equals x minus mu. And then you can go ahead and add mu to both sides. And that's our destandardizing formula. It's mu, the mean, plus the z-score times sigma. So you don't have to solve this ever again. You can just use this destandardizing formula. So we use this when we're working backwards. So example six. Um, we're, we have a normal curve with a mean of 8.2. So as soon as I hear normal curve, I put the mean in the middle and a standard deviation of 3.51. And we want to find the x value with an area of 0 0.025 to its right. So this is backwards because we know area. Backwards means we use inverse norm. So let's sketch 0 0.025 area to the right. So I don't know what goes on the number line but the area is 0 0.025. So inverse norm will give me a z-score. And then once we have a z-score, we're going to destandardize. So we start with area to z-score from inverse norm. Inverse norm will give me an z-score, and then we will convert that to x using the destandardizing formula. Mu plus z sigma. So let's go ahead and find the z-score. We use inverse norm area to the left. So we have area to the right. So we'll do 1 minus 0 0.025. We should get 9.75. So inverse norm of 0.975. Second distribution, inverse norm. 0.975, and we get a z-score of 0 0.1960. This is a z-score, this is not a data value. So now we destandardize. So that's x is the mean, 3.51, plus the z-score, 1.960, times the standard deviation. Oops, I mixed up the mean and standard deviation. So mu plus z times sigma, so mu was 8.2, sorry, plus 1.960 times 3.51. We can just type that all at once. And we get 15.0796. And so that would be considered an x value. So the next example will make more sense because we'll have real data. Let's go ahead and check out this last example, example seven. So we were looking at those cupcakes a while ago. So they had average calories of 300 and a standard deviation of 17.15. So let's start with the quartiles from chapter three. So the quartiles, Q1 was the 25th percentile. And then um, we had the median was 50th. There's not much work there. And then Q3 was the 75th percentile. So these are working backwards because we know the percent. So I'm going to do the median first because the median is actually really easy with normal curves. So 50-50 would be right at the mean of 300. So the mean and the median are both 300 for normal curves. And that has to do with 50, 50. Cuts it in half perfectly. So we don't need to do much there. We're really more interested in Q1 and Q3. So let's start with Q1. So 25th percentile means 25% less than. 
which means area to the left is 0.25. So we know the area is 0.25 for 25%. We don't know the z-score or the data value. So we're going to find the z-score, and then we're going to destandardize. So the z-score is from inverse norm, because we're going backwards, of area to the left, which is 0.25. We already have left area. So that saves us some time on this one. Second distribution, inverse norm, 0.25. And we get a z-score of negative 0.674. And then we'll destandardize, which is x equals mu plus z sigma. So mu was 300. Um, it turns into subtraction because the z-score is negative, minus 6.74, times 17.15. And we get 288.4, we'll say. And this was calories in a cupcake. All right, should we try Q3? It'll be really similar. You can hear my dog shaking in the background. <laughs> um, so Q3, same idea, but 25%, 75%, sorry. So 75% less than, or 0.75, is area to the left. And we don't know the z-score. So same idea. We'll do inverse norm to find the z-score. Inverse norm to the left was 0.75, so we already know that. Oops. Second distribution, inverse norm, 0.75. And we get 0.674. It's actually, because of symmetry, that's actually why we're getting the same number. There's some symmetry here. And then we'll destandardize. So x is mu plus z sigma. So in this case, we'll do 300. And then we'll do plus 0.674 because it's a positive z-score, 17.15. And this will tell me Q3. And we get 311 for Q3.6. And again, it's calories. And that's how you find them. Um, let's do a couple more and... Yeah. So part B says find and interpret the 82nd percentile for the cupcakes. So percentiles are nice because percentiles are area to the left. So 82 percentile means 0.82 is my area to the left for 82%. So we'll shade the curve. That'll be more than half because it's 82. And I'm not going to label the number line. I'm going to label the area. So same thing we just did. We're going to find the z-score and then destandardize. So we'll use inverse norm to find z-score. That's when we go backwards. We'll do inverse norm of 0.82, because that's area to the left. Inverse norm of 0.82, and we get a z-score of 0.915. Destandardize. Oh, sorry, my dog made me do that. <laughs> X equals mu plus z sigma. And we get 300. That was our mean, same problem, plus 0.915 times the standard deviation of 17.15. All right, plug it in, and then we'll take a break because my dog is barking. 315.7. So what does this tell us? We've interpreted these before. 82%. Of cupcakes and then we learn percentiles are always less than 315.7 calories and that's our interpretation so we'll finish up this in the next video it's kind of a long example anyway so why not split it up into two videos